Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another Shadow Wars deck presentation. Like the last few deck guides, this video is part of a series of sponsored content by Cygames. If you're totally new to the game or want to try it out, you will find the download link both for the Steam version as well as the mobile ones in the description below the video. Today we will have a look at a so-called White Wolf Forest Craft deck. This type of deck is built around a combination of two cards, the White Wolf of Eldwood and the Silver Bolt. The White Wolf is a legendary creature that will cost you 8 play points, has 4 attack, 4 defense and rush, so he can directly attack an opposing follower. What makes the card so interesting for a combo deck is his last worth effect, because when this unit is dying, you will put the highest Forcecraft card from your deck into your hand at the start of the next turn and on top of that also reduce its cost to zero. Well, that sounds really good, so let's check out the target card that we want to get with the White Wolf, which is the Silver Bolt. Silver Bolt normally costs you 9 play points, you will draw a card and after that you will deal as much damage as you have cards in hand to a target enemy. Through the effect of the White Wolf, you will then of course play the card for free and normally deal between 6 and 9 damage to your opponent's face. If you find yourself in the lucky spot to have two silver bolts in your hand on turn 9, that can already lead to a total of nearly 20 damage and good enough to kill anyone in your way. The deck is not new by any means, but with the new Shadowverse expansion Tempest of the Gods out, the deck is stronger than ever in my experience. When we look at the decklist, you will probably notice that the early game is nearly identical to decks before the expansion was released, while we are also seeing some excellent late game additions. Your basic strategy early on is to fight for the board while slowly increasing the amount of cards in your hand through various card effects like the Fairy Whisperer, the Fairy Circle or Glimmering Wings. In most matchups you will not be the aggressor but instead are looking for favorable traits. Your endgame combos are strong enough to finish any game in one or two turns, so everything you need to do is to stay alive long enough. On the other hand, you of course still have rhinos and some other small fries in the deck and from time to time it is also possible to win games fast if the situation is right for you and your opponent is just starting way too slow. Now let's have a look at the new additions from Temples of the Gods. Firstly, we have the gold card Jungle Warden two times in the deck. This one is a ward unit has some solid sets for the 5 play points. What's more interesting about the card is of course that neat little enhanced 10 effect. If you invest 10 instead of 5 play points, you will not only summon 1, but 2 jungle wardens and all jungle wardens are getting storm, so you can potentially push another 8 damage in your opponent's face. If the silver bolt on turn 9 wasn't good enough for a kill on your opponent, the double storm wardens are definitely then in to finish the game. The second new unit is the Crystallia Aaron, another ward unit this time costing 6 play points and she has the ability to heal your leader for 3 when played early on turn 6. If you wait a bit longer, you will furthermore get an additional effect that will recover 1 evolution point. This one is overall another great card, which is both good for your longer survival and of course increasing damage output through an extra evolution point. With these two cards on top of the already strong core, we are looking at a good build that should bring you decent results on the ladder as well. If you still have questions about the deck, don't hesitate to use the comment section below. I will now show you some games of the deck on the ladder, so here we go. So first game we have Forest Craft vs Heaven Craft. Heaven Craft in general is most often going very slow, so the Elf Child here, which is normally against most other classes, really really good early on. You cannot really use that against the Heaven Craft, still keeping it, because from time to time there is some interesting Heaven Craft build, but normally it will not, we are keeping the Goblin Mage so and uh, I guess we're dropping the Nature's Guy. Let's find something to play on turn 2. Nope, that's a Fortunate Athena. So we will not play the Elf Shard here. We will find the Fairy Whisperer for turn 2, which is excellent. Then we can play Fairy Whisperer, we can play Goblin Mage. Then we might play some Fairies or all the stuff from the Goblin Mage on turn 4 and Fortunate Athena on 5. Unexpected, opponent is going slow. Oh, fabulous bro it is. In this matchup, we might be even going more to the face than usual early on. If we, for example, if the Goblin Mage is giving us a Rhino, we might can deal a lot of damage already early on. There's a second play, which is one turn too late. Normally you want to play that on turn one. There's already a Rhino, so that is good. 
Let's start still with the Goblin Mage. Find more stuff to do. Which is another Rhino. Yeah, that's good. So we might change gears here. And just trying to win the game all year on. If we're not able to do that, we still have our combinations for the late game. So we have, for example, the Jungle Warden here in hand already. As a Temple Defender. And this guy is just reducing the amount of damage it is taking in the opponent's turn by one. So if we are, for example, now dropping the Elf Child, this one is dealing zero because it would deal one, but it's just subtracting one. So that is not helping. Uh, we could, could just play one Rhino here. We could play double fairies and the Rhino. That would be good enough for a kill on the Temple Defender. So maybe just doing that. Yeah, I guess that's the best. <laughs> Well, we can still push 3 damage in his face. His board is empty otherwise. Full board clear is only coming on turn 6 in general. If he's not dropping the amulet that is banishing all followers with 2 or less defense. Then of course he can clear the board kind of easily. But that also, that also needs one turn time. So you cannot just do that here. As a priest. He's evolving the priest, then the priest is banishing an enemy follower with 3 or less defense, so that will be the Goblin Mage here. And he's also probably killing the Fairy Whisperer. Should do that. There you go. We will then go for the Fortune Hunter Fina. Evolving that. Also got the Circle. So that's a 5-6, we can take down the 4-4. Four, four. We can push another 2 in the face. Goblin Mage here is costing 0. But because we also have stuff like the Circle here in hand and the Rhino, I like to wait one turn and then we will play the Goblin Mage, Circle, Rhino and some Fairies. So to deal more damage with the Rhino. That should work decently. He's now drawing two extra cards from the second play. His board is empty and he has five. So he could drop the Lion Spirit, then evolving that and killing everything on the board. Which normally should be his best play. He's going for Grimnir. War Cyclone, which is a ward. Snake Priestess is another ward. And there is not an Evolve. Hmm, okay. So definitely starting with the Goblin Mage here. We're getting the Lily. Hmm, the Lily is good against strong creatures because then you will just transform them into a Snowman. A Snowman is a 1-1 creature. So pretty good. But not right now. We don't need that at the moment. Let's just drop the Circle. So we have the Elf Child, we have the Nature's Guidance, we have the Rhino. Uh, Rhino, Nature's Guidance, Rhino would be good enough for a kill here. Or for a lot of damage, let's say it this way. Uh, so why not? We're evolving the Goblin Mage as well to take down the 2-3 here. Otherwise we would lose the Fortune of Fina, we don't like that too much. So we're gonna kill, gonna kill. Two in the face from the Fairies and three from the Rhino. Using the Nature's Guidance, get the Rhino back in our hand. And we can play it again. And this one now has then 6 attack. And our opponent is currently at a 5 attack, sorry. Currently at 9, so he's down to 4. So we're not missing that much. And just because the Havencraft is just going super slow, we can do that. Normally against more aggressive decks, we're just trying to defend early. While against the Havencraft, which is going super slow, that's uh, not needed. So he might now play the Decree. And clearing the whole board, he can do that now with 6 play points. And then we might just go for a Goblin Mage and we might pick up another Rhino. And with that we can easily win the game. Because we can play Goblin Mage, Fairy, Fairy, Rhino and have enough. Have There's already the Conceit, so no need to do that. That was fast. Game myself. 2. And again we are facing Heavencraft. So we know what we are facing here. Just another slowish deck. And still keeping the F-Shot Mail, we might just drop the Nature's Guidance for now and keeping the Circle. So replacing one card, we're getting Goblin Mage. Because we're going second, we might have a more serious chance to play the F-Shot Mail early on. Opponent can push the first damage on the board, but probably not doing that, right? Heavencraft is just super slow. And again, nothing to play on turn one. We are going for the Circle here, getting two Fairies. So it would be nice to get an Ancient Elf. We're definitely dropping the fairies then on turn 2 and having the ancient elf ready for turn 3, which is kind of huge, especially if the Havencraft is again going super slow. Unicorn Dancer? Oh, that's a minion. Oh, so that's something to kill here for the Sylvan Justice. We're getting another fairy into our hand. So now I have triple fairies. 
We have a goblin mage, we have the Fortunata Athena, a lot of stuff to do. Not a single amulet so far. There's a prison priestess, he's getting um, an amulet from his deck into his hand. We will now drop the double elf shard to clear the prison priestess. And we'll also drop one fairy. Have a stronger board. The board clearer is only coming in two or three turns all in general. I mean you could use an amulet that is banishing every follower with two or less defense, but again, that is taking some time. Grimnir Varsaclone is good on the other hand, we can now evolve. We might do that, might not do that, depends a bit. Yeah, probably evolving the Goblin Mage, let's just stop that here. There's a Rhino, so we are evolving the Goblin Mage. We link the Grimnir, then we can push three in his face. So again, going aggressive. We are also dropping one fairy, also we have the Rhino in hand. But just to have a stronger board here. If he's starting with a priest, we can banish the goblin mage and clear one of the smaller units. It's the black and scripture. And another prison priest. This one is evolving. He's killing probably the elf child if he's clever. Yeah, he is clever. We might then play Fortune Hunter Fina, clearing the 4 3 here. And still pushing 3 damage in the face. We're getting a Goblin Mage that is costing 0. And this time we're keeping the Goblin Mage. We'll play that next turn alongside the Rhino. To push more damage in the face. He's now down to 14. He has the option to clear the board. And that's why we are also keeping the Goblin Mage for now. We can now on turn 6 play the Decree. That is costing 6. And clearing the whole board. He's going for the Priest on the other hand. Evolving that. Banishing the 5-2. And clearing one of the units. Well, this one is down to four life. And another black inscription on another small unit. Interesting. Ancient elf. Hmm. So let's start with the goblin mage, right? Let's start with that. Fairy whisperer. So that's costing a bit too much. I guess we're dropping the circle. Oh, we can drop now. Wait, we're dropping another fairy. And playing the Rhino as well. Go for the face. The Rhino is also going for the face. So he's down to 10. We are dropping the Ancient Elf. Getting everything back into our hand. And the Ancient Elf is getting some Evolve here. So that's a 8-9. We're taking on the 4-4. He might take down our Ancient Elf. But even then we have a lot of damage in hand. Because we still have the Rhino. And we can find another one with a Goblin Mage. So if he's investing... In a destruction on the Ancient Elf. He's vulnerable. There's a Tribunal of Good and Evil. So he's killing the Ancient Elf. Three left. And he's not playing anything else. Well that is kind of good. And then we are just starting here with the Goblin Mage. And some decent stuff hopefully. Another Rhino would be nice. There is another one. So what we're doing is just dropping double fairies. And go with the Rhino for the face. That's another... 4 1 here, so he's down to 6. No! And with the next Rhino, we might have enough to clear the board next turn and win the game. So, again, we were not forced to use our combination. Heavencraft is just super slow, so we don't need that. Radiance Angel, he's healing back to 9, he's drawing another card. Oh, Snake so Priestess is a ward, but that's not good enough for you. Sylvan Justice. We're gonna take care of that guy. Getting another fairy here. We will now just drop the circle. We need a bit more damage. What else can we do? Uh, glimmering wings, right? That's good enough. So, drawing another two. Nature's Guidance. And let's hit him for four in the face. We're dropping the Nature's Guidance. Get the Rhino back into our hand. And we will just play it again. And have enough damage to kill him. So another easy victory here against the Heavencraft. That's just super, super easy if he's going so slow. I hope I can show you the combo then in the next game. Game 3. And guess what, guys? Finally, not a Heavencraft. We are facing a Shadowcraft. And Shadowcraft right now is by far the best class to play. Has the highest win rate. Can deal with everything on the ladder. And you definitely want to see some Elf Shard Maze and Ancient Elf for the start. Luckily, we got there. 
It would be nice to get another elf shard may here, by the way, so we can drop two to clear stuff like a skull beast. Right now we only have one. We're getting another one. All right, that's pretty good. And normally you can expect that he's going for the face because opponent is going aggressive. That means he will not trade and we can just drop the second elf shard and hopefully clear the stuff. Ooh, lurking corpse. That is not an aggressive card. He can only attack enemy leaders and followers. Though it could be that he's playing control. That's possible. So we are hitting, unfortunately, this guy. I don't like that too much. Oh boy. Problem is, of course, the lurking corpse. He will attack followers of the ward. And that will be then the ancient elf next turn. So we don't like that. We seriously don't like that. Could kill the skull beast. That would be an option. Kill the skull beast here. So he's getting one shadow. We can use the nature's guidance to get the elf shard made back in our hand. And then hopefully kill the lurking corpse with the elf shards. We're getting goblin mage. Because if we're losing the elf shard, that's okay. Full conversion. He's killing his unit by himself. There's another lurking corpse. All right. So what we could do is just drop Elf Shard, Nature's Guidance and Elf Shard and the Lurking Corpse is gone. It sounds like a decent plan. And we are of course drawing another card then. Fortune Hunter Fina. Another Elf Shard. The Lurking Corpse is killing the Elf Shard. And the board is cleared. We can evolve next turn. Right now there are not that many good evolve cards we have. Goblin Mage, Ancient Elf. Well, Fortunate Athena is a card we want to evolve, but that is only coming on turn 5. Prince Catacomb. Okay, that is not too strong. Seriously, not too strong. We are still going for the Goblin Mage. We will also evolve that here. We get the Fairy Whisperer. Another Elf Shard would have been sick. So that's a 4 4. We are taking care of the Prince Catacomb, who is then spawning a 1 1 skeleton. If he's evolving the skeleton, that would be good enough to take down the goblin mage here. But he is just going for the face. Negro assassin. So he's killing the skeleton and we're losing the goblin mage. Which is alright. Fortunate Athena is now coming. We will evolve that again. We are taking care of the negro assassin. We are getting goblin mage for free into our hand. We will not play that right now. Because next turn, we have a decent turn. If we just play goblin mage. Harry Whisperer and then, for example, Glimmering Wings alongside the Rhino. So the Rhino is then um, getting quite a lot of damage, so we can trade with that if we want. Or we can, of course, just see what we can find with the Glimmering Wings. Rapid Necromancer, a Spartai Soldier. Both on the Spartai Soldier, so that is getting still. Life on the board is at 3-1. The Soldier, when that is dying, uh, then he's getting two Shadows. So then he has 10, which is a lot already. Uh, let's see. Let's start with the Goblin Mage, right? The Lily. Oh, yeah, we could use the Lily here on the 3-1 or on the 3-2. Don't think that these shadows are that helpful. Otherwise, that is just damage from the Necromancer. We might also just keep the Lily for later. He is probably playing with the Mordecai. So then the Lily is getting super strong. Oh, yeah, let's let's wait, right? We're dropping the Whisperer. We will play the Glimmering Wings here, drawing two more cards. There's another Lily and we're going for the Rhino. And then we can just, uh, for example, evolve the Goblin Mage here. That's the last evolve point we have. But we're also clearing both units. We're taking two points from the Rapid Necromancer. He's already down to three cards, so that not that's not too much. Turn 8 is definitely the White Wolf. Turn 9 definitely the Silver Bolt plus the other Silver Bolt. That's a lot of damage. There is the uh, Sergeant, which is giving him another Shadow. He is using his last Evolve Point. He has a 4-4 Sergeant there that can trade into the 4-1, but he's using the smaller unit uh, because he has Orthworth. So that he's killing it. Kinda good. Then we are dropping Crystallia Lily. Getting it down to 1-1. One, one. And we will also, if we're going for the circle, we are down to seven and getting two cards. That's too much. We're going for another fairy. Then turn eight, white wolf, turn nine, double silver bolt. And that's a lot of damage. Bone Chimera. 
last word summon two skeletons and this oh that's a new one i can't that's a dollar blade warrior uh this one alert follower give it plus two plus two okay he's destroying alert follower and then he's getting plus two plus two that's a six seven and uh, don't care too much for that probably still still going for the white wolf we can kill this guy he has four damage right now on board we had 13. maybe we could also use the crystallia but no we're not doing that so gonna rip him there's only one card so we should be fine in the worst case we will just play the fairy beast get a lot of life back and play the silver bolt on for example one of his units but normally we don't have to so down to nine there's another dollar blade warrior okay maybe maybe using the silver blade the silver bolt so there we go uh then let's go for the silver bolt here we still have another one and we have the jungle wands ready we are then healing back a lot a lot of points back to 17 we're using the sylvan justice on the one two and we are also we are at eight cards let's drop one fairy jungle wands are coming then we have the second silver bolt ready nico mansa yeah he's now out of steam we will just win this one kind of easily oh another dollar blade barrier ah oh, that is too much man too much but he's just conceding okay we're winning that anyway and with that we're at the end of today's episode so thank you for watching